Good morning. The Rechabites are being tested. Will they pass the test? We're in Jeremiah chapter 35, verses 6 through 11 today. Here's our reading. But they said, We will drink no wine, for Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, You shall drink no wine, you nor your sons, forever. You shall not build a house, sow seed, plant a vineyard, nor have any of these. But all your days you shall dwell in tent, that you may live many days in the land where you are sojourners. Thus we have obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, and all that he charged us, to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, or our daughters, nor to build ourselves houses to dwell in, nor do we have vineyard, field, or seed, but we have dwelled in tents, and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. But it came to pass, when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up into the land, that we said, Come, let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans, and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell at Jerusalem. So at God's command, Jeremiah the prophet, he's, he's laid out bowls of wine, and he's brought in the Rechabites, and we're going to see. What are they going to do? They were firm. They were resolute. They said, no, we're not going to drink wine. Our ancestor way back commanded us not to drink wine. A, a period of over 200 years ago is where this command comes from. But all this time, they've stayed faithful to this command, and they're faithful even today, even when the nation has become very corrupt. There they are, faithful to the heritage of Jonadab. So they've continued their nomadic lifestyle, staying out of the cities, uh, not planting vineyards, uh, not becoming too entrenched in any one place, keeping to a simpler lifestyle, keeping away from the worldliness and the corruption that almost inevitably comes out of cities and populated areas and areas where there's a lot of settlement. Doesn't seem to take very long before hard things morally begin to arise out of those places. But they've not been contaminated by worldliness or a sense of their own wealth. We have this many vines, none of that there. They see themselves as perpetual travelers, pilgrims, if you will. They're kind of always going from one place to another, pilgrims and strangers. I wonder, is there something here that we can apply to our own case? Are we so built into the culture that we live in that we're ready to be corrupted by its many influences, its many conveniences, so-called, its excesses, its pleasures. You know, the devils, a lot of times, they really have our generation on the run. We feel very stressed because of all the challenges we're facing in our experience. So then we have many options that are presented to us to de-stress. And a lot of those de-stress options are actually things that will make our life worse. As people begin their day, say, with a cup of coffee, which immediately puts you in kind of a drugged state, kind of a heightened nervousness. Uh, there's a lot of things that the devil has. Or people were so nervous, they, you'll stay up at night poking on your cell phone, looking at it, looking at it. Meanwhile, it's, it's preventing the sleep hormone from, from happening and because of the eyes, because of the light coming into your eyes. So the devil's glad to, to corrupt us with conveniences that he puts before us. And again, we would maybe say conveniences in quote marks. So, actually, a simpler lifestyle, country living, if you will, me, will serve us quite well in seeking to be God's children today. Let's not make things too easy for the devil. Let's make them hard. Let's be spiritual people walking with Jesus day by day. Keep it simple. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, there are many conveniences. We seem like we're kind of addicted to them, things that we think will make our life better. But, Lord, we want to have a simpler life. We want to have the benefits of not being corrupted in any way. So, Lord, be our guide. Help us to uh, approach these things in a wise way. Uh, help us not to become corrupted. And the Rechabites have a lesson for us. They are obedient to the command of their ancestor over 200 years ago. We might not even be obedient to a command that, that we ourselves had a few years ago. Help us, Lord, to be more resolute people in serving Jesus. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So God be with you today in your pilgrimage. Not a dirty word. It's a good thing. The Lord will help you to simplify. Have a wonderful day.